Greetings friends, my name is John Gabriel and this is the new Calculus channel. So today I'm going to be talking about a topic that I discussed about seven months ago and it's a very important topic because it proves to students that the definition of the mainstream derivative in calculus is indeed flawed. So let's begin. Now, you'll recall I showed you this video here, uh, how Newton and Leibniz influenced the development of cal calculus negatively. And in this video, I explained to you that uh, you can actually find uh, a derivative function in terms of angles for any function and it will be defined everywhere as I showed you in that video. So for example, uh, if I have this function, this, this is what the, uh, where all the derivatives will be defined between zero and minus pi over two radians. Okay. This is for this function here. And, uh, in fact, every function's angle derivative falls between half pi and negative half pi. So it doesn't matter uh, what function you have. So if you have x squared, again, let's clear this and see what happens when we plot the, oh, let's put the trace on. That will help. Okay, and this is, again, those are all the derivative. That's the derivative function, okay? The one in the, that you see the red dots. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that because you can come back here and watch this video okay so and i'll put a link to it so that you you know where it is now the problem with the mainstream definition and here's the problem the problem is this is that this uh, identity that you see here is a true identity it comes from my historic geometric identity in other words this identity here okay so so let's move that a little bit here. Okay, now uh, this identity states that the slope of the non-parallel red secant line, this red secant line, which is non-parallel to the green tangent line, is equal to the slope of the green tangent line plus the difference in the slopes of the two, right? So this identity is true. And what it says is that these two slopes on the right-hand side are constant. They don't change. The slope of the tangent line doesn't change, and the slope of this non-parallel secant line doesn't change. Because if it does, then this identity is no longer true. So yes, while you could probably move this uh, 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 h along here, it will be true for any given h and the x that's being used over here. Okay, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what function you have. This identity here is true. Okay, so where does the problem come in in the mainstream? Right over here. So what the mainstream academics do in their ignorance, their grand ignorance, the last 400 years, is they take a limit of both sides. But if you take a limit of both sides, then this, this doesn't change because these are both constant values. Okay, so, so what happens here is they decide, oh, we're going to keep this constant and we're going to let this go to zero. Okay, and that's precisely what they do. Now, this difference here can never be zero because if it's zero, then you have no finite difference and no derivative. Okay, so it can never be zero, right? So if we see the calculation and we try to move this to zero, we get this nonsense here. Okay, so it can't work. There's a problem there. And I'll also put a link to this applet so you can play around with it so the problem comes in here you cannot take the limit of a constant and then change that constant people listen to me i am smarter than you and everybody else and i know what i'm talking about so call your stupid math lecturers and educators out when they give you this definition it's wrong okay and not just for the reason i'm telling you it's wrong for many many other reasons okay so uh, what 
essentially happens is that this definition boils down to the derivative is equal to itself plus the limit of this uh, dif of this difference going to zero. But this is a constant for any given x and h. It's a constant. It doesn't change. The difference, for example, if I try to put a different difference in here, okay, so if I try to, let's see, another calculation here, uh, reveal formulas, uh, let's see, which one does it here? I think it's, I think this one does it. Okay, so if I try to put a different difference here, I'm not basically going to end up with the same, uh, the same values I had before. Okay, this one shows it very nicely. So here's the difference. Okay, so if I change the difference, see, then this value changes, this red value. So I cannot just let this go. I cannot put any value I like in there. It's constant for any given x and h. That's what I'm telling you, okay? And, and yes, this here is defined for each and every function. This is the definition, or more simply, the length of f1, which is this line here in the similar triangles over h. That's all it is, okay? So we're sitting with a huge problem here in the formulation of the flawed mainstream calculus. Now, not to spend any more time on that, but I've written a whole write-up on how uh, I discovered that it was realized from the new calculus, which, by the way, is 100% rigorous. Uh, mainstream calculus does not handle inflection points properly. The new calculus does. And not that it matters, really, because neither the fundamental theorem nor the mean value theorem uh, care about inflection points, okay? So uh, in this article, I show you how all these things are, are in fact, uh, realized. And I give you the proof of each of these uh, slopes. And I show you how I get this, okay? So... Make sure you download this article and study it. It's only 10 pages long. And then I show you how it fixes your broken mainstream formulation, okay, which is in this article. Now, this is something mainstream academics hate so much. They will vote this video down, by the way. They have successively always managed to uh, produce more dislikes on this video than any of the other videos because this is the most damaging video to their reputation, okay? They're absolute morons, and they do not want you to realize these things. That's why they dislike and download my videos. But I show you here that you don't need any of the concepts of limits or infinity or infinitesimals. And moreover, Newton and Leibniz really messed up because uh, every function's derivatives fall between half pi and negative pi if you're considering the slope in terms of angles and not rise over run, okay? So in other words, not tan theta, but inverse tan theta. So I'm going to leave you with that. And uh, also encourage you to go and support me on Sci.Math, where I am debating the biggest morons on the planet, okay? So if you go to Sci.Math, you'll see that none of them can refute my arguments. All they can do is they can, you know, try to uh, harm me in every possible way through doxing, through libel, through lies, through every sort of action they possibly can because they know I am right and they hate me for exposing their ignorance. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with this. Until next time, my name is John Gabriel and this is a new calculus channel. Goodbye, friends.